Welcome to this channel. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to play tonic sofa music. And this is very important for choral music or hymn players. Now, you may come across a lot of choral music or hymns which have been written in tonic sofa style. And you may be wondering how to play this type of music. We are going to learn that in this tutorial. It's going to be done in two parts. So this is part one of the tutorial. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe so that you can get more content such as this. Let's get right into the video. So this is what we call the tonic sofa music. You find that you have letters rather than symbols being represented on the piece of music. So here you have different letters, M, R, D, S, and it goes on and on. In the tonic sofa scale, we have these notes, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So that represents the ascending scale of the tonic sofa. Now you may come across other letters and other combinations. When you see a D, E, it means that it's the sharp of the D. So if you see an E after a particular letter used in the tonic sofa scale, it represents the sharp. Now if you see an A after the letter, it represents a flat. So if we were taking the DO and we wanted to sing a DO sharp, which is D, would have to write it this way. So, do, di, re, mi, fa, vi, so. So, I was singing, adding some of the sharps. So, I added the D and added the fee. Now, if you have a flat, you need to add, as we said, an A. So, if we're singing in the descending fashion. So, do, T, after T, we have a flat, which will be the to. So, do, ti, to, la. So, the to represents the flat of the T. So, if you see any piece of music like this, you are dealing with the tonic sulfur. And by the end of this tutorial, we should learn how to be able to play music written like this. Now, we are going to use a song by Henry Hemi for this tutorial. And this is the original score by Henry Hemi. And this is the tonic sofa transcription of the music. So we can see that here, because of the symbol, we know that we are dealing with G. In the tonic sofa, usually you see something like the do is G. So, telling you that you have to play this particular piece in the key of G. Now, the time signature here is 3, 4. So, it means that there are 3 beats in the bar. When you are dealing with tonic sulfur music, you also see that you have a group of notes before the bar and that tells you that you are dealing with a 3-4 music meaning there are three notes in a bar so that it's it now there are many reasons why we have to learn tonic sofa music it's a language as we know the more languages you have under your sleeve the better you are able to communicate with people who don't necessarily understand a particular language the same thing for music. We know that the language of music is what we have here. But in some places, you may see these types of notes which have been written. And you also need to understand how that works. And if you're able to play it, it's a plus for you. So it's complementary. Obviously, we know that we need to learn, you know, the score, how to play this. But if you can play the score and you can also play the tonic sofa, 
is a plus for you. So now it has certain advantages. With a tonic sofa music, you can play in any key easily without having to rewrite or rescore the particular musical piece. So I'll give an example here. So we have this piece by Henry Hemi, originally written in the key of Jing. Supposing you went somewhere and the score that you have been practicing in the key of Jing has suddenly been written in A flat and you don't have your original score there, you need to find a way of playing it and that's where the tonic sofa comes in. The only way you can get from here back to here is by rewriting it and either way. But if you had the tonic sofa, it looks like this. And all you have is telling you that the do is ching. The same thing, same letters, nothing has changed. If you look here and look here, it's the same letters which are being used, the same um, letters and the same tonic sofa notes. See, the only difference is that you have been told that Do is A flat. So if you're able to play this, you have no problem. If you go somewhere and you are given the same piece, but they tell you that Do is A flat, it will be easier for you to play than to try and now learn the whole piece all over again. So it's useful for people who are beginning to learn music and you've not mastered all the keys. You may be familiar with a few keys. If you are able to play tonics offer, chances are that you will be able to play a good number of pieces until you are able to learn and master the other keys comfortably. It also helps you to appreciate chords and chord progressions easily. So as we can see, just by looking at this, we know that these notes are found in the do chord. We know that these notes are found in the so chord because the so is part of this. So it's actually a so seven, so t re fa. And we know this is a re chord. So just at a glance, you can figure out what the chord is and you can see what progressions you are dealing with. If you look at this one, however, it's difficult to just tell at a glance unless you are very experienced. You literally would have to imagine the notes on the keyboard or have to find a way of you know figuring this whole thing out that you are dealing with one chord or the other. As I said, if you have a lot of experience, this may not be too difficult, but you can agree with me that if you look at the tonic sofa very easily you can just figure out what the chord and what the chord progressions are. Now it's also useful in memorizing music easily, especially for singers. So usually if you go for choir practice, everyone would have their line that they'll be learning. And the first line typically is for the sopranos, second altos, third tenors, and then the fourth the bass. So if you are taking the first line, you'll be singing something like this. Mi, re, do, do, ti, do, re, la, ti, do. After doing this for a while, and you become very conversant with the tonic sofa, applying the same principle to other songs will be very, very easy for you to do. So it helps singers to, to also appreciate music better. Now, the tonic sofa music is very useful for simple pieces like hymns and choral high lives. And also very useful when you don't have time to practice. We can appreciate that for hymns, you know, they are relatively sung at a much slower pace. And the notes there, you know, are basic notes. You don't really have a lot of complicated, you know, chords and all that going on in that piece of music. So when you are playing that in tonic sofa, you know, you are good to go. So I'm going to play this piece in three different keys. I'm going to play it in the key of G. I'll play it in the key of A flat and then I'll play it in the key of A for you to see how easily you can actually play tonic sofa music. Here I'm using the same 
thing. I'm not using three different scores as I would have done if I was supposed to play it using the staff notation. Okay, so a disadvantage of the tonic sulfur music is that it is not very useful for complex pieces. So if you have a complex piece, trust me, you don't want to be looking for the tonic sulfur version of that. You may, chance are that you may not even find it. But if you find a way of even transcribing it, it's very difficult and, you know, um, burdensome to try and play that piece. So I'm going to play three different pieces, two by Handel and one by Schubert, for you to just appreciate how complex those pieces are and to be rather useful for you to refer to the staff notation rather than a version of the tonic sulfur. So a disadvantage there is that it's not useful for complex pieces. So let's listen and watch. Okay, so now how do we go about the playing? Now there are two ways of playing tonic sulfur music. One is a traditional method, and the second is the alternate, that's a more practical method. So in the traditional method, as seen in a four-part harmony score, you have two notes on the right and then two notes on the left. So you're going to play there soprano and the alto on the right hand and the tenor and the bass on the left hand. So usually there's no point in doing this um, unless you have certain interesting movements in each vocal part that you really want to come out. Other than that, you may not necessarily want to go to the traditional method. So I'm going to play Henry Hemi's piece using the traditional method. So let's watch the video and listen to how it goes. Okay, so now the alternate method. So in the alternate method, the left hand usually plays the bass and the right hand plays the chords with the melody as the highest note. So an example in four part harmony, three notes will be played on the right and one on the left. And the left hand can play the bass either in octaves or single notes depending on 
the level of experience of the player. So this same piece by Henry Hemi, you can see that here we have, you know, two parts here and then two parts here. So the left hand is going to play these two parts and the right hand is going to play these two parts. Now what you usually do in the alternate method is that you play three notes here and one note here. So this would be how the tonic sulfur version will look like. So we'll be playing three notes here and then one note here. It's the same thing here as what um, you were doing here. So in the alternate method using the um, you know, of playing the tonic sofa, you want to convert what you have to something like this. And once you have something like this, you realize that playing becomes very easy. So now we are going to go through the steps of how we are going to play using the alternate method and how easy that is going to be. So let's get right to that. So in step one, 